everyone, my name is Carla and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, um, where I talk about mostly cross stitch but also other crafts, a little bit of life thrown in. I do my normal videos um, on Sundays, and um, but this one is a separate video. It's going to be a little demo video. Um, <clears throat> I showed this little uh, pillow that I finished for my mom. Um, I showed it a couple videos ago and um, she did the stitching and then I made it into a little pillow. I filled it with walnut shells and lavender and then I put this little um, tiny pom pom trim on it. Um, and one of my viewers had requested that I kind of do a demo on showing how I put that together. So I'm going to do that. Um, today and um, I don't know exactly when it'll be uploaded but um, obviously if you're watching it then it was bit uploaded so um, so I'm going to show you how to do that obviously using a different piece um, so what I'm going to be doing uh, first is I kind of wanted to just show you all the supplies I need um, this is my upside down this is my uh, newest finish uh, Tikkun Olam this was a design uh, that I created myself and I stitched it on um, 22 count hard anchor fabric. Um, I did it uh, with one thread on the 22 count and this is also fabric that I dyed myself so um, I thought that this was a really pretty piece of fabric and I was excited to use it. So I'm going to be making a little um, shell filled pillow using this. Um, the thing that I like about the little shell filled pillows, you can use them as pin pin pillows, um, but I like them because they have a little bit of weight to them and um, almost like a bean bag. So they can be used just as a little decorative pillow, you know, you can use them as a pin keep. Um, but the other thing is, is that they're good as a little weight for a paperweight or um, in stitching. Um, I recently was working on a project where I needed to couch some threads and in order to do that you need two hands and the, the piece kind of has to be flat to do it. So um, what I did is I kind of put the top of my piece on the table and I happened to have this pillow that I made for my mom and I used that as a weight on the frame because I'm this is on a needlepoint piece so it's in a needlepoint frame. I used that as a weight so that I could hang the piece kind of off the edge of the table and still be able to access it with two hands. So I just kind of like this finish. I like the way it feels. This was uh this pillow was the first time of me using these pom pom the pom pom trim and I really like it. So um anyway so that's what I'm gonna show you. So this first little segment I'm gonna show you all of the uh the supplies that I've kind of gathered. Um so obviously the first thing you need is your stitched piece and then you need to pick a backing fabric. So I had a couple different options here. Um, I have a couple different purples. Um, I kind of wanted to avoid using um, these fabrics that I got because I'm using all of these little ones with the um, with the silver glitter in them um, for my um, year of celebrations. There's my December one right there. Um, so I kind of wanted to save them for that. So they are an option. I also have a blue one, which would actually go really well with this fabric as well. But I kind of wanted to use these as a last resort, just because I want to save them for right now until I finish that project. Um, I also had a piece of pink, which um, would, would work. I think my lighting is just a little bit off, but in person it does match pretty well um, but the reason that I decided maybe not to use the pink is because um, I got this uh, five colors yeah five colors of the little pom-pom trim to try it out um, and the green I took out of here but I thought that I would use the pink with this pillow this is actually white and then this is a really light blue um, but I think that that is going to actually just look white against this fabric. So I thought I would be using the pink trim. I think that will look good. Um, 
but if I was using the pink, I didn't really want to use the pink back. So the fabric that I ended up with is this kind of model purple. And I think that that's going to work really well. It's, this is just a little scrap piece, but that's enough to cover. To cover. Okay, so you need your, your stitch piece, your, ba your fa backing fabric, um, your trim. And then um, you need a piece of something on the inside. I like to use this fusible fleece. This is a Pellon, I want to say 937, but it is Pellon fleece, uh, fusible fleece, that's what it's called. Um, I got it at Joann's. Um, so I have a piece of this. You fuse it using an iron. And... Um, then the other supplies that you will need, um, this is just an empty, a little empty box, a shipping box that uh, my friend sends me something in. But I do actually use this because once you get your piece, when you're stuffing it, I put it in here so the, um, if the one shall spill, they don't spill everywhere, they spill in the box. Um, so I have my little sack of uh, ground walnut, walnut shells. I bought this. It was a two pack. I got this plain one and then a lavender scented one. Um, but I've since learned that um, this is very expensive compared to if you get ground walnut shells that are reptile bedding. It's the same thing apparently, but they package it in a big sack that's inexpensive for reptile bedding and in a little sack that's more expensive when it's supposed to be for crafters. So um, next time I buy it, I will look into that, but apparently it's the same thing. So um, I have this uh, half background one, which I was like, I think I have the lavender somewhere. I, think, I don't think I used it up, but um, this should be enough because I'm also using um, lavender buds. Uh, so you can use lavender buds with the scented lavender, but really the scented ones just have some lavender buds in it already and I use extra. So um, that is another item that you need. And then the last thing, this is a little cardboard funnel. I just made a funnel out of a piece of scrap heavy cardboardy paper and this will help in filling the thing. It's just taped. It's just a rolled up piece of cardboard taped into a funnel shape. Okay, so those are the supplies you need. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. I am going to fuse, uh, to iron my piece, iron the backing fabric, um, and fuse the fusible fleece to my piece. And then I will bring it back and show you that and then move on to the next step. Okay, so I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so next step, um, I took this over to my ironing board and I ironed the fusible fleece onto the back of my stitching. Um, the reason that you want to do something, um, I like the fusible fleece just because it gives a little bit of a heft to it, but you could use interfacing, you could use anything um, that you prefer. Um, you do want to have something lining your stitching, even with an Ada, which is you know a thicker or this hardinger but it's a thicker fabric um, if it's linen or something like that you definitely need to have an interfacing because the fabrics you know so thin and see-through but even with a heavier fabric I like to do that because when you're stuffing and you're like poking in there and everything you want to protect the back of your stitches and this this protects it um, the next thing that I am doing I am NOT by any means an expert sewer uh, or seamstress and I don't trust myself to make straight I mean I can do straight seams but when it's a pillow like this where I want the seams to be very even and you know an even border and stuff like that I don't trust myself to be able to do that by eye and when you have um, when I'm I found and this is with my machine I don't know if it's with everybody's machine but I'm assuming um, when I use the feasible fleece I kind of have to, when I'm sewing, I kind of have to have the fusible fleece up because if I have it down, it catches funny on the, um, the feeder teeth on the sewing machine. 
So, um, so obviously if you have it up, you can't even like follow the lines of the eta to make a straight seam and at the distance that I want. So what I'm doing is I took kind of a contrasting, a blue thread, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm just making a simple running stitch, um, not very much on the front because I really want it on the back and I'm going to use that as my seam, um, guide. Um, I, I started, I made a little bit of a line using my ruler with, um, you know, one of the quilting pens that will, um, either fade, uh, over time or fade when you iron it. Um, but since that's going to be inside the seam anyway, um, that's fine. But I'm using that as my guide on the front to then sew my running stitch. And so I'm, I'm able because it is aided to just follow the line of the, the weave. And I'm going to do that all the way around. And then I'm going to put, you know, front sides together and do my seam around the, uh, the pillow, leaving, um, a little bit of a stuffing area on the side. So I'm going to go and continue to do that. And then I will be back and show you the next step. Okay. Okay. I'm back again after having sewn my back to my front um, of the, the stitched piece. Um, I told you I'm not in any way an expert seamstress and like the first time I sewed it, I had the back folded over and it got all caught in. And so I had to rip it out and do it again. Um, I moved my camera so you guys can see the workspace. So hopefully, um, you'll be able to see what I'm doing, um, as I do it. Okay. So now that it's sewn, you're going to want to like clean up all of the loose threads that are hanging and, um, and the next thing I'm going to do is I have a pinky shears. I'm going to pink around the edge of my stitching, um, because you don't need all of that bulk. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll be right back. Okay. So the, I have, um, cut off all the excess. Um, you'll notice here where I left it open. Um, I didn't cut that as close because then when we fold it over, I'll have a little bit of extra in there that, that will allow me to whip stitch it. Um, so now the next step is to turn it inside or turn it right side out. Um, so let me just gather it. Now I have, this is a plastic chopstick. You can use, um, just like the bamboo ones that, um, you get from Chinese takeout. I happen to have a set of these plastic ones and, um, they have a point, but it's not pointy. If that makes any sense, it doesn't, it's not going to go through my fabric, but it is really good for helping me turn stuff out. And I'm also going to be using it when I start stuffing it to kind of tamp down the filling. So see, pushing out, you know, I'm going to turn this light off. I think it might be better. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to get up the corners up here. And apparently my corner didn't turn on this side very well. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm going to be able to just stitch that closed, hand stitch it closed. And since we're going to have a trim around it, that's not going to matter so much. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and iron this and I'll be back in just a okay. second. So I ironed my piece. Um, I took the opportunity while it was over there by my uh, ironing. Uh, set up and sewing machine. I fixed the corner and then when I ironed it, I just ironed the front and back um, the little flap so that when I stitch it um, That's all neat and on the inside so the next step is to fill um, The pillow so I use a little box like this and just kind of set it in there again so like if I uh, spill 
it's going to spill in the box and not spill all over the place. And I use um, this little funnel that I made. Um, you want, like a regular funnel is probably not going to be wide enough. Um, plus, it, it doesn't need to cost anything. This is just a little piece of cardboard um, packaging. So, you just put the funnel in the opening of your pillow like that. And then basically, I alternate putting in walnut shells and lavender buds. And because I have the funnel, I'm less likely to make a mess, but as you see, I still do a little bit. So that goes down to about there. And then I take my little chopstick and I stick it in and I kind of just like tamp it down. Um, I would assume that this would be like the same basic method that you could use for um, sawdust. Um, I've heard that's even more messy, but I would assume it would be the same. And then I put in some lavender buds. And of course, I'm still making a mess. I'm kind of at a funky angle too because of the camera. It's there now. I like to make them really nice and full. I'm hoping I'm not going to run out of uh, shells here. Um, but I might. raise the camera up just a tiny little bit. Okay. Okay, and now you can see the top. Oop. Okay, so you can see it didn't go down. It doesn't quite, and, and that happens more with the buds than just use your chopstick to kind of poke them through. eventually get down in there and then smash them down So you can see it's up here, but I'm going to smash it down and, and it'll go lower. Okay, so I'm going to continue to do this, um, fill this up to the sewing point, and then I will be back. Okay, I'm up to uh, almost the end. Um, I'm going to try and tilt this and see if you can see how full it is. So the last layer I put in was the... Um, the lavender buds. Um, so then the final layer that I want to put in is the um, the walnut shells. And when I put this in, I, I'm going to kind of try and squish it with my um, with my chopstick over into the corners. So the goal is, is to fill it as full as you can without spilling it all over the place. Okay. So 
I've got it all the way to there. And that's going to be pretty good. I'm just going to stick a little pin in it right here just to avoid any accidents if it tips over. So you can see that's pretty, pretty nice and full. Okay. So the next step is going to be to sew this up, uh, hand whip stitch it, and then to start putting on the, um, the trim. And I want to make sure that we like the pink, which I think we do. And Okay, so let me um, clean all this up, and I will be back in a second to show you the hand, hand okay, sewing. Okay, so I have threaded my sewing needle with um, pink thread, which will match the trim. And um, this is just, I'm doing kind of just a quick little whip stitch here to close up the, um, the filling hole. Um, you don't have to worry too much about it showing because we are putting trim around the edge. So that will hide these stitches. But I'm still trying to make them pretty tiny and neat and right on the edge. And I'm using a doubled thread just because it's a little bit stronger that way. to focus here. Come on, focus. There. Okay, so I'm just going to continue to stitch this shut and then um, I'm going to start the pom pom trim and then I'll show you how I do the pom pom trim, but I'm gonna have to show you kind of after I, after I get it started. Um, I won't start the trim here. I'm gonna start it at the bottom because there will be a little place um, where it will overlap, and it's better to have that at the bottom rather than right at the top or at the side where you're gonna see it, really, obviously. So, um, let me finish uh, stitching this up and get the pom pom trim started. And um, one thing, once I get this, uh, once I get this sewn up, then I can kind of like redistribute a little bit. So, you know, it's a little bit fatter down here than it is up here. So I'll redistribute redistribute the um, filling to make it nice and even before I start doing the pom poms. But I'll be back. Okay. In a second. So I have started um, sewing on the uh, trim and I'm going to show you how I do that um, for a couple a couple stitches and then I will finish it and then show you the finished product um, this trim it's so it's the mini pom-poms on like a tape this these don't come off of the tape um, I know there's a kind um, that Lindy Stitches uses. I think they're from Lady Dot Creates, where like you separate the pom poms from this tape part. Um, I don't, these don't do that. If they do, I don't know how. Um, but I don't really mind having the tape. I put it towards the back, and as you can see on this one, it just makes like a little edge um, on the back of the finished piece. And I don't think, it, I think it looks fine. Um, I kind of like it actually. So, um, so what I do is, 
um, is I go, I just take a little bite out of the front fabric. When it's eight, it's easy because you can just kind of go right along the um, the edge. If you sewn it straight, you should have have pretty much of a straight line. And then I go through to the back and I go through the tape. And then I pull my thread over between the two pom-poms to the front again and then go to the next one. And then I pull it between the two pom-poms and then I go to the next one. Um, and I have a really good color match with this thread and the pom pom, so it's the stitches pretty much become invisible. And that's what it looks like on the back, and then on the front. Okay, so I'm going to finish sewing this by hand um, and then I will be back and show you the finished product. Hi, I am back with my finished pillow. With the pom-pom trim. smells really nice with the lavender. Um, lavender for a lot of people, it helps if you get headaches. Um, so this is a nice thing to have around. Actually, you could put it on your head. Um, or you could use this kind of thing in a lingerie drawer as a sachet. Um, but yeah, so that's what it looks like with the trim. And if you have any questions, um, hopefully I know some of the stuff is probably a little bit harder to see. So if you have any questions on how I did this, um, a, then uh, yeah, just uh, ask below and I will do my best to help you out with it. I really like this tiny pom-pom trim. I got it on Amazon and um, uh, that's what it looks like on the back. I hope you enjoyed this little demo and um, if you have any questions please leave them below and I will be happy to answer them for you. I will see you in my next regular Floss 2 video and in the meantime this is Carla and this my channel is Carla Being Crafty and please remember to always be content, be kind, and be crafty. Thanks everyone!